Welcome to Morning Prayer. Today is Tuesday, November 14th. My name is Keith Free. I'm one of the pastors at St. John's Lutheran in McGuanago, Wisconsin. I'll start with an apology. Yesterday I said it was Monday, November 14th. Hopefully I didn't confuse too many of you as yesterday was actually November 13th. Well, today is the 14th and God bless us as we continue with morning prayer as we go to midday on page 242. Hasten to save me, O God. O Lord, come quickly to help me. Evening, morning, and noon, I cry out in distress, and he hears my voice. You are my God. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I call to you all day long. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We pray. Heavenly Father, Send your Holy Spirit into our hearts to direct and rule us according to your will, to comfort us in all our afflictions, defend us from all error, and to lead us into all truth through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Yesterday we started a look at Moses, one of the great leaders of the Old Testament. Um, Moses and Abraham and King David are are right up there um, in the New Testament, um, the Mount of Transfiguration, Jesus was there, Peter, James, and John, and Elijah and Moses. He's certainly uh, a great leader in the history of the children of Israel. Yesterday, we reminded ourselves that Moses was uh, put in water, and Pharaoh's daughter drew him out of the water. And after being uh, taken care of by his mom until a certain age. Then he lived in Pharaoh's, Pharaoh's home, and he was a very privileged man. Uh, and yet he knew he was an Israelite. During that time, uh, he saw the harsh treatment the Egyptians were uh, doling out to the Israelites. And one time his anger got the best of him, and he actually ended a person's life. He committed murder. And after that was found out, he had to flee to Midian, where he spent another 40 years. So just think about this. The the man that we consider such a great leader on the Mount Transfiguration, a, a glorious picture, no doubt about it, was a man who had committed a murder. And then we think of his life as uh, the Lord appeared to him at the burning bush, that bush which wasn't consumed, through it, the Lord was speaking to Moses and now giving him a direct call to come back to Egypt and to lead his people out of Egypt to the promised land. And you may recall there were some excuses that Moses brought to the Lord. And you're saying, really? <laughs> if the Lord calls and you see this miracle taking place, you're still going to make excuses? Well, he did. And it was took some work, but we know that what the Lord wanted him to do, he would ultimately do. And then, uh, through another series of years, the children of Israel were wandering around in the desert, and you may recall the, the lack of food and water on occasion. You may also recall all the grumbling and hardship that the people endured, and sometimes it, I'm sure it really grated on Moses. Well, one time again, we need water, Moses, and God said to him, Go speak to the rock, and water will gush out. Rather than just speaking to the rock, Moses took the staff in his hand and struck the rock two times. That was in defiance of the Lord. And so at that point, the Lord said to him, You will not enter the promised land. It might seem a little harsh to us, but we know that when we sin, and by the way, we sin often, when we go against God and his word, Sometimes there are going to be ramifications. Uh, if I don't treat my spouse as lovingly as God directs me to treat her, there may be times when she's not quite as happy with me as I would like. Or when the Lord gives us the opportunity to serve other people, whether in our community, our neighborhood, our church, uh, to use our time and our gifts and our talents and our abilities to serve those in our family, and we just uh, simply hold up our hand and say, uh-uh, I'm not going to do it. 
I want to have time for myself. I'm just going to do my thing rather than listen to the Lord and do what he wants me to do. Or what about that murder? Do you realize that God in his word says that whenever we are angry at someone, when we have that white hot rage, he calls that, he equates that to murder. And so perhaps we haven't literally ended a life, but God looks at us and says, you're no different than Moses. That hatred is murder. So we, we, we come to a point where we see that uh, God in his word says everyone's a sinful human being. Why was God using Moses to direct the children of Israel from Egypt to the promised land? Wasn't it because he was keeping a promise? A promise to one day have the Savior of the world come to this earth? We're certainly thankful that as history unfolded, that God continued in his patience and in his mercy, in his compassion, in his will, in his providence, you know, in, in every quality, that God did not wane one iota in making sure that the promise would come to fruition. We needed that promise to come to fruition because you just heard we're sinful human beings. The Lord says, be perfect if you want to enter heaven. And well, we're not. It's plain and simple. Thankfully, Jesus Christ came and lived that perfect life. And then he took our sins to the cross. He made that payment that no one else could make. Now, by God's grace through faith in Christ, we have that forgiveness. With that forgiveness, then we can be those people who are rejoicing in what Jesus Christ has done. And we can be those people who hear the Lord's call to live for him and to serve him in so many different ways. On this day, November 14th, uh, the Lord bless us to rejoice in who we are by God's grace, connected to Jesus Christ, forgiven our sins, looking forward this day to serve our Lord again. For our prayer, I'm going to read some of the first verses from Psalm 32. Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them, and in whose spirit is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me, my strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, and you did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless us and keep us now and always. Amen. The Lord bless your day.